Semicolons always make me happy Getting parenthetical, you can't be blue Look at what I've read What the great minds all have said Why a writer is always so much better when they're dead I'm gonna write a deconstruction paper And send it to the MLA Middle older mod, it's the language of God I love English in a major way I'll never talk in jargon or in fragments This is Dr. Raymond Norris, and I'm here with you today in order that we might examine a peculiar subculture within the ranks of academe. This one consisting of an obtuse minority of individuals who take it upon themselves to study in university the literature, the critical landscape, and the linguistic consistency of the English language. Not only that, but we are here in addition to observe firsthand how such said subjects the individuals who take up the study of English operate within the larger American cultural mindset. I am on record as saying that, even from the point of view of one such as myself, one who has been highly educated in the halls of academia. English majors are rather odd ducks. But in the end, that is for you, the viewer, to decide, as we take you with us on a wild journey into a world of literature fanatics, obsessive compulsive grammarians, linguists, and absurdly quirky writers. So won't you join us as we travel into this fascinating and often misunderstood mini culture tucked amidst the larger American panorama. And what's your major? English. Oh, a teacher. No, a writer. Have you ever considered the exciting world of computer software? Kingdom for a kiss upon her shoulder, semicolon. Working on your book? What? Question mark? I said, how is your work? Did you just call me a jerk, question mark? What do you want, question mark? You know, whenever you write, you don't listen to a thing I say. You just start talking the way you think. I am writing as we speak, semicolon. I'm in a moment of inspiration period. How do I know if I've gotten anywhere if I don't even know where I'm going? Question mark. What do you want from me? Question mark. What do you want? Question mark. You say punctuation out loud. What? Question mark. Never mind. You're such a jerk. Period. Judging from your tone of voice, I would have used an exclamation point. Being an American English major presents problems that go far beyond what the average specimen of Homo sapiens attempting the art of communication through the unconscious use of consonants and vowels must endure. The following have to do specifically with English majors in the realm of love. Hey, sorry I'm late. Hey, no problem. What do you have? <laughs> Nothing really. Just. What do you mean, nothing? Let me see it's it. It's just one of those stupid Valentine things. Totally ridiculous. Incredible time with you the last six months. You're amazing. Here's hoping for more of the same in the future. Love, Sam. Is this what I think it is? I guess so. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Sam? What are you thinking? There's a sentence fragment here. Did you know that when you wrote it? What? A, a fragment. You do know what a fragment is, don't you? A fragment of what? A fragment of a sentence. I mean, it's a mistake. It's not grammatically correct. So? So? I'm an English major. I'm not just some illiterate flunky you picked up off the street. But honey, I never said you were. I just asked you to marry me. 
But is this any way to do it? No, it isn't. There is a damn sentence fragment here, right here. In fact, your very first sentence is this sentence fragment, for Christ's sake. And, and that means you won't marry me? Of course it does. I don't want my children walking around speaking in fragments and thinking that it's okay. After that, it will be double negatives and slang. No, I just can't do it, Sam. I can't allow myself to do it. Here, it's over. It's just over between us. So, do you want to lay down? What do you mean? I mean, what would you think if we just, like, laid down right here? It's a lie. It's a lie. What are you talking about? It's not a lie. I'm just asking. Are you a virgin or something? I mean, lie is correct. Are you gay and you just forgot to tell me? I'm telling you, it's lie. Lie. So, you don't want to get laid, is that it? Are you some kind of pervert? Some kind of sexual deviant? No, I'm an English major. I can't just lay down, and if you ask me what we think if we laid down, then how am I to answer? You can say that you're going to get the hell out of my house. If you don't want to get laid, that's your business. I guess you have other preferences. You don't even know what you're talking about. That's the problem. It's goddamn lie, lie, lie. The only lie is that I ever thought you were attractive. That's a lie. I guess no one's getting laid around here tonight. Nice day, huh? I see you're reading. I read a lot, too. Books like this. I'm an English major. One morning, upon awakening from his agitated dreams, George Samsa found himself in bed, transformed into a monstrous vermin. He lay upon his hard armor-like back, and when lifting his head slightly, he could view his brown, vaulted belly partitioned by arching ridges, while on top of it, the blanket, about to slide off altogether, could barely hold. His many legs, wretchedly thin compared with the, his overall girth, danced helplessly before his eyes. So what do you think of that? Obviously, she's a business major. It had to be you. It had to be you. I wandered around. Hey, baby. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. I've always depended on the kindness of strangers. Yours are like the darling buds of May. Is that the overhead lighting in your eyes? Or are we just star-crossed lovers? All the world's a stage, and I would be happy to pay you to dance naked upon it. Stella! The apparition of these faces in the station, petals on a wet black bow. What the hell does that mean? What do you want to do this weekend? Read a book. What do you want to do? Read a book. What do you want to do this weekend? Read a book. What do you mean, read a book? You just finished reading a book. There's more than one book out there. You don't need to tell me. Three-fourths of our money goes to books. We don't even have anywhere to put any more damn books. Besides, don't you think there's something better to do than to bury your nose between a bunch of pages? Like, people actually go out and do something instead of just reading about it? Well, why don't you do something for me then, right now? What's that? Please, 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 please stop talking. I'm trying to read. God, did you see that? Of course I did. I'm standing right next to you. I'm going to put that in the story. 
Forget it. You took the last interesting thing and put it into a story. This one's mine. I'm going to write a poem about it, goddammit. You're going to write a poem about it? But who's going to read it? You know you could take the entire readership of poetry in the U.S. and stick them in a football stadium and still have seats left for people who actually buy books of poetry. Quantity is not quality. Just because you can take what can be elegantly written in a couple of lines and put it into 25 pages of overwrought prose does not make it better. To prove my point, most people prefer fiction, but most people are idiots. Didn't you know that? I don't care what you say. I saw it first. I'm taking it. What? The light reached your eyes a nanosecond before mine? Yes, I think actually it did. <laughs> That's absurd. You're acting like an ass. Well, why don't you huff off and put that in a poem? Put in some images about the fact that we're all dying and you'll have yourself a prize-winning masterpiece. <laughs> and why don't you write a Hemingway ripoff about how a guy is so insensitive that never in a million years will he realize that he's an insensitive, macho idiot. Hey there, mind if I join you? Sure. My name's Jeff, I'm an aviation major. What are you studying? I'm an English major. Oh, I'm sorry. For what? I mean, I might have said something wrong. It is a very pleasurable experience we are having, is it not? I mean, did I say that correctly? Don't worry, I'm not prescriptive, I'm descriptive. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to be going. So, what do you do? Oh, I'm studying linguistics in the English department. It's fascinating, all the books I get to read. Sounds great. Hey, nice. me and my friends are about to get off. Do you think I could get your digits? My digits? I'm not sure I know what you mean. You know, your digits. My digits, well, I have a lot of digits. Well, to your home. What, to my home? Yeah. You mean my address? I don't think I feel comfortable giving you my address. I really don't know you. No, the digits to your phone. Oh, to my phone. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, sure, sure. Just as a person studying linguistics, the lexicon with which you and I are operating is taking place with Unless, of course, we are communicating in a more transformational mode of language interpretation that goes beyond the specific cultural apparatus to the subliminal level in a kind of Chomsky-like epiphany. Oh, shit, I... <laughs> Next, we visit the peculiar realm of the unstoppable poet, a universal archetype that can be found among majors of English throughout the North American continent. Okay, I brought another one for you. Okay. Ice drips into cavities. The root quivers. The white sling of periodontal disease. Oh, yes. But there is no Novocaine for life. Oh, oh, hey, I've been writing like crazy. Okay, listen to this. Okay. A hole in my pocket. A hole in my jeans, a black hole in space. Holy, holy, holy. The circumference itself is an after image of the whole. But how about me? Here we listen in as a pair of English majors engage in the exciting game of literary criticism. From a historicist point of view, I'd say that the author was really trying to tell us that the signifiers that point to the colonization of the New World when juxtaposed to the old are clearly one of internal decay and corruption that prove that all ethnic and gender bias is actually a construct of a deeper tribal splitting of the psyche that only the archetype of the trickster can demystify. But that's Jungian, isn't it? Showing that clearly the dominant patriarchal system is inherently evil and ill-equipped. But if you deconstruct the text, you can see that the subtle interactions of cultural discourse that play throughout the alternating lines of the textual dialogue reveal that it's in truth a man's world after all. <laughs> and why shouldn't it be? Didn't God make Adam before he made Eve? You're wrong. It's not a man's world. It's Wayne's world, you dodo. Huh? If you look at the symbols embedded in the twin motifs of the duality, man, woman, boy, girl, male, female, 
it, you can clearly see that the penis itself is not only obsolete in the post-Freudian age of pharmacological elevation, it's actually about as relevant as a fool parading around in a coxcomb in the Garden of Eden, looking for the serpent, which is, of course, a reverse symbol of the phallus, coming from Mother Earth as it does. So it's not a male appendage after all, but only a pun upon the need for the phallus. But you're failing to see that everything is based on envy. Your whole argument is nothing other than the Amazon utopian platonic ideal rostered onto a wall of decaying goddess worship that has never yet been proven to exist. As if you have empirical evidence to support your paradigm, which is shrunken, flaccid, limp. Well, at least I have one. Mm. Oh, hey! Oh, did I do this one for you? Oh, gyrating against my weakened torso. Her bones were so pressed beneath my skin, I could feel her cellular dispositions acquiescing forward. If I could but be so bold as to reap and sow in the little time we had, here among the tenements of life, but alas, it was only the sound of one hand slapping her hand against my face. Ow! Family members of a person actively pursuing the English degree are often known to hound the American English major with a barrage of questions which focus on the nature of practicality. So here, in defense of the accosted, we present some of the practical usages of obtaining a degree in English. Yeah. No. Hey, I know. We could ask Louise to write a poem for Aunt Jen's 80th birthday party. Yeah, she's an English major. They must have taught her how to write a birthday poem. Well, hold on. I'll ask her. Louise, will you write a poem for Aunt Jen's birthday party? Guess what? We have a most incredible surprise for Aunt Jen. The bat, entangled among the shredded cobs of death, flutters her wings, whacking at fossilized walls, from which stalactites, preponderances, the teeth of rock and slime, entombed below the light of day, rot far below, the reckless blue and butterfly-ridden holocaust of life that presents itself as a party for our senses, ears, eyes, skin, when in truth we are all wretches, ink stained by the publication of our birth, who flap our wings as if it were, not to the grave itself to which we flew. Happy birthday, Aunt Jen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Aunt Jen. Happy birthday. Yes, go yeah. on, blow them out. Yay! Excuse me, excuse me. Can you tell me how to spell serendipitous? C R E N D I P I T O U S. And you know, it's interesting, the etymology. You look great. What have you been doing? Oh, just been working out here and there. Tried a couple of diets. But look at those arms, those muscles. You must have a personal trainer. Actually, I don't have a personal trainer. I'm an English major. Check out these books that I have to carry. Hmm? I could swear they weigh about 10 pounds each. Uh, you know what, though? They're better than a set of free weights. You're kidding. These heavy books and you look that great? Hmm. Oh my god, I should change my major. Uh, 
I guess being an English major does have its benefits. You might be poor, but at least you look great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Away, you scullion, you rampillion, you fustelarian. I'll tickle your catastrophe. Hey, all right. And here's some money for you. To grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death. The undiscovered country from who's born, no traveler returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him, Horatio. Let me have men about me that are fat, sleek-headed men, and such a sleep at night. Young Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. Would that he were fatter. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness. And some have greatness thrust upon them. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of record time and all our yesterdays have lighted fool. The way to dusty death, out, out, brief candle. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. Hmm. Oh, hey, oh, hey, hey, there you are. Listen, 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 I've got one more. Toenail clippings, the hair on my legs, dung, calluses, corns, the dead skin between my toes, and the lint and dust there as well, and the hair on my arms and under them, and the pubic hair, and the smell of belching eruptions, and all these orifices, even the lowly pores of sweat, so oddly calling Calling, calling you to me. <sighs> you know you're an English major when you read in the following situation. You can also tell that you're an English major when you pick your friends by what they have read. What do you mean you haven't read all of Faulkner? <sighs> you don't have anything by Jane Austen. But your honor, she refused to read my thesis. The rain descends upon the violet curtain. I am the living testament of my life. This, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the conclusion of our first examination into the world of the American English major. I think that all of you will likely deduce from the evidence you have seen that the American English major is a peculiar fetish of the American educational system, producing or contributing to behaviors typified by a wide range of archetypal disorders 
seemingly inherent to the genre. The anal retentive personality type, the neurotic, often savage, writerly personality, the readaholic, and the sexually disadvantaged. Nevertheless, often these people do continue on into the real world, somehow perpetuate themselves, in other words, spread their genes, and some, by the grace of God, actually seem to succeed in the daunting business of life. And Doug, why did you become an English major? Well, if push came to shove and you were in a pinch, well, I just figured you'd want to be able to write your way out of whatever it was with all the punctuation correct. Doesn't that make sense? The reason why I became an English major is I ain't got to do no math. My mother was an English major and my father was an English major, so apparently it's something in the genes. The reason why I became an English major is that we have to read lots of books. And when you sell them back to the bookstore at the end of the semester, you get all this money back. Why did I become an English major? Well, I just figured that if it's the number one language in the world that people speak, there's got to be money in it somehow. Well, Shakespeare is written in English, and the Bible is written in English. Isn't English the language of God? Okay, well, you know, I, I just started taking a few classes, and, and then I took some more classes, and before you knew it, I was an English major. Well, I always wanted to go over and visit England, so I figured before I did, I better study the English language. You know how awful it is to go somewhere and not be able to talk to anybody. None of the books we read have pictures in them, but the stories are usually pretty interesting. Being an English major, you don't have to dissect anything. Okay, welcome to English 1010. My name is Heather, I'll be your professor this semester. Um, why do I have to learn English when I've been speaking English my whole life. Semicolons always make me happy. Getting parenthetical, you can't be blue. Look at what I've read, what the great minds all have said. Why a writer is always so much better when they're dead. I'm gonna write a deconstruction paper And send it to the MLA Middle older mod, it's the language of God I love English in a major way I'll never talk in jargon or in fragments Strunk and white will stay close to my heart What's right's not always hip Over consonants we trip But I pray a participle never dangles from my lips I'm gonna write a deconstruction paper And send it to the MLA Middle old mind, it's the language of God. I love English in a major way. I know when a colon is a colon. I know where a period belongs. I know when a paragraph is over. I know when somebody does it wrong I can spell check without using a PC I read Emma long before a clueless was made Dickinson's renowned on my shelves the sheets found Who needs Daniel Steele or Stephen King When you've got Ezra Pound I'm gonna write a deconstruction paper And send it to the MLA Middle older mod, it's the language of God I love English in a major way I'm gonna write a deconstruction paper 
and send it to the MLA. Middle, old, or mod, it's the language of God. I love English in a major way. I love English in a major way.